vs. the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. What's up, everyone? My name is Sarah Dietschy Rhymes with Peachy, and this video is sponsored by my friends at Skillshare. Did you know I have a Skillshare class? It's true. Less than $10 a month, and you can sign up today to get two months free. But let's get into this. This isn't mine. This is my friend Scott. So, so Scott, get in here. Should I do it with the audio? <laughs> He's booming my audio. <laughs> This is an MP4 file from the C200 in C-Log. And this is ProRes film out of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Just to show you that these files straight out of the camera are not exciting at all. So the rest of the footage will be color graded the way I want to color grade it, so I'm sorry if it's not your cup of tea. I am very inspired by hipster moody stuff. I mean, Secret Life of Walter Mitty is one of my favorite movies. So maybe you can tell, you know, I have a little inspo in the, in the blues and the greens that's what I love, so enjoy. Can you formally tell the people who you are, what you do? My name is Scott McKenna. I have a video production company, and then I also love making YouTube videos. Yeah, so he's a fellow East Coaster. That's right. um, so we're gonna be talking through five things and really comparing them. So the ergonomics, which obviously <laughs> is very different. We're also going to talk about the autofocus and that the autofocus situation here is almost non-existent. We're gonna talk about usability because we're actually gonna switch. Um, I think mm. my menus are better, but you probably have more flexibility in what you can do. So we'll simple, but maybe you can't do as much stuff. And then dynamic range and codecs, because we got Blackmagic RAW and ProRes, and then you have... Canon RAW Lite, they okay, call it. Okay, okay. Which is RAW, but some people say it's not really RAW. Who is knows? Is it real RAW? Who knows? And then just MP4, right? Yes. Which is 8-bit. Yep. I like being light, easy. I do a lot of one-man band stuff. Even though this is the 85 mil, I wouldn't normally have this lens on. I do a lot of this with interviews. Hey Scott, how are you doing? Where they're like looking at me and it's like, tell me about your life. And I kind of need to be able to one-hand it. Um, and then, you know, I, I use the monopod sometimes, but being able to do this, that's kind of my move. Hey Scott, tell me about your life. And I tried to do that with a C200 and it's a little too heavy. It was like, Okay, yeah, oh. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your rig here, what's going on, because this is probably the most minimal setup, right? Yeah, this is just as it is, so it's just a grip, handle, and the monitor that it comes with. You can get it smaller than this by taking off the handle and running the actual monitor straight to the rig, so it takes this whole bulk away gotcha. and becomes much smaller. It is you nice also, to have the handle. Yeah, the handle's nice for carrying. I actually find I don't shoot much with it, but it is nice because it puts it at a nice view, but if you yeah. take this off, it actually becomes way smaller. And then obviously you can just use the built-in EBF. Right. But this is as basic as it gets in terms of, there's mm -hmm. nothing on here that's not in the box. And in and terms of cinema cameras, it is pretty tight. I mean, yeah. it was nice. Uh, it's a nice grip. It yeah. feels, feels comfortable to use. It's exactly. just bigger. Yeah. It's just a little heavy. In terms of storage, you have dual SD card slots. You can either do relay recording or can back up at both at the same time. That's what I do. Okay. And then CFast is the other option for raw. CFast. So when I was doing my unboxing for um, all of these cameras and I basically got two Samsung T5s, uh, the one terabytes, people were like, why don't you just use the CFast cards? Like, they're guys, so expensive. They're so expensive. Of course it would be compact, easier to use than having a T5. Um, but when you're shooting Blackmagic RAW or even ProRes, and you're gonna come out the other side with a 500 gigabyte yeah. uh, project. I so. bought a 256 and it's $400. So if they even make a 500 gig, yeah, you're like it's <laughs> crazy how expensive. So bonus points to the Blackmagic for yes. being able to plug in via the USB-C a T5 SSD. I would love to be able to do that. Battery life obviously <laughs> goes to you. Um, the Blackmagic does the LPE6 batteries, which are Canon batteries, but you only get 40 minutes. And this guy... Quite a bit bigger, but you can shoot in full quality for five and a half to six hours on this big one. And this is not the stock one, the stock one's actually the A30. So mm. it's flush to the camera. So this is double the capacity. The display is a full articulating to screen, which is really nice. It does that way, this way, this way. This is a full 1080 display. So it's beautiful. And the swipe gestures are really nice. You can preview stuff really easily. 
um, but there's no tilt. So when you're getting something on the ground, if you're, you're high up above, up. you kind of got to guess. When we were outside shooting, it's so beautiful in New York when it's all misty and semi-rainy. Our cameras did survive the rain, but the most annoying part the NDs. The NDs. He has one button where he switches in between internal NDs. Really came in handy in the rain because we were yeah. just worrying about like drops and water getting on the ND. I do think that is a really nice feature of the yeah. C200, being able to have every single lens you have yeah. have NDs available. <laughs> Autofocus wasn't that big of a deal mm -hmm. because I still use the a7 III for a lot of my YouTube stuff because I'm doing a lot of sit down interview things where the focus doesn't really yeah. change. So that's why uh, it was easy for me to do black magics. But we tested it out. The autofocus isn't necessarily important to everybody because I'm used to that manual focus too because I used the GH5 for a while. Right. But it is nice when you want to use it because we did find that when you're shooting at 1.4 on 85, it's really hard to yeah. manually rack focus that. Yeah. <laughs> It was really hard. <laughs> Number three is usability. I want to test out if I give Scott this camera, how are you going to do? You think you got it? I don't know. So I have more footage to show you, but before that, I just wanna say thank you to this video's sponsor, Skillshare. I love them so much. Like I said before, I have a class where I teach the basics of video creation and vlogging, if you're curious about that. Me personally, I've been trying to catch up with John's illustration skills. I just personally got an iPad, so even though I'm not looking for a career in illustration, I can learn things that can help my videos and just make things more fun. So Gemma has a really, really great illustration class along with Jerome who teaches you how to use Procreate, which is a one-time purchase app on the iPad and I'm such a big fan of it. So I'm exploring some of the design and illustration classes just because it's a little bit different. You know, I'm such a video first person and so it helps keep things, you know, cooking. But hey, if you want to get serious about video, design, illustration, marketing, entrepreneurship, music, productivity, there's so many things. Skillshare has a class for that. So whether you just want to flex that creativity muscle or you want to get serious in a creative career, well, check out my Skillshare link in the description below for guess what, two free months of Skillshare. And let's get back to the video. video I've actually done an entire project with my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K and the 4K so I've learned a lot and you know there are some quirks you don't want to use the knockoff ProMaster LPE6 batteries because um, at least on the 6K it just kept shutting off on me so I learned that I only use the LPE6 batteries that are $60 it's fine. But really this video turned into a color grading video for me personally. It was a lot of fun and it took forever to try to get the looks that I wanted to get and then make them similar, the C200 and the Black Magic. So we were shooting at the same exact white balances, but the C200 tended to go more on the magenta side and the Black Magic, like people know, tend to go more on the green side. So it didn't take me as much time to get the Black Magic looking like 
like. I like, you know, the green and the blues. Um, and the C200 took a little bit more time to get where I wanted it to, but they both look great in and of themselves. The MP4 on the C200 is 8-bit, and then the ProRes is 10-bit on the Blackmagic, um, but they both held up great in the color grading process. The easy noise reduction and resolve came in clutch for some of the slow-mo footage. Going back to uh, this video turning into just a color grading video, I used the plugin Film Convert. Um, you can download it for Premiere, Final Cut, Resolve, all of the things. And boy, has it been a journey. When you're dealing with this type of footage, it's very flat when you import it. And it takes a minute to get the look you want, but it gives you a lot of flexibility to achieve that. Film Convert has different camera profiles that you want to download for the cameras you're using to get kind of tailored looks. But when you apply that filter first, it's just, it looks awful. You have to do a solid amount of tweaking. What I was finding with the Blackmagic footage, I was getting the exact looks I wanted in Resolve using the Film Convert plugin. I mean, it just took a minute to dial, but dang, like the grade on this shot, if I could get all of my footage this moody, Oh, sign me up. And I ended up color grading all of my stuff in Resolve and just exporting a ProRes Master back into Premiere to edit because Film Convert in Premiere was just not looking great. But then I discovered that Film Convert Nitrate is out, a new version of the Film Convert plugin, and all of a sudden, Film Convert in Premiere looks amazing. So this is just me diverting the entire narrative to say if you use Film Convert in Premiere, goodness gracious, download nitrate because it doesn't look as, I would say like washed out or super, where you lift up, you know, the blacks, you know, that look, I don't like that look. I like punchy, contrasty, so we've arrived. So I know I didn't directly hit those points of Kodak and dynamic range, but hopefully this was just a fun video for you to see the differences. And for me, it was fun because one, I wanted to see how the C200 felt and how it is to work with the footage. Um, and also as two very different cameras, I have the peace of mind that I'm glad I just went with two black magics. Of course, it's cheaper, but also I was thinking, hey, maybe I could do like a C200 as the A cam and the 6K as a B cam. No, don't do that. That's basically just like me doing my GH5 and my A7 III for the same video and interview thing. It's just like mixing two things that shouldn't be mixed. It's gonna take a minute to match the footage. So I think it's in your best interest if you're doing interview stuff, if you need the B cam uh, to just stay within the same family of cameras cameras. If you hated the way I color graded it, it's fine. You know, everyone has their preference, but hopefully I showed to you that, hey, no matter how close you try to get them, they just look so different. So what do you think? Did you like what you saw? What do you like better, the C200 or the Blackmagic? Now keep in mind these cameras, the price is so, so different. So it is a little bit of a quirky thing to compare, but it satiated my curiosity and I hope it was a fun one. If you want to see more of the footage straight out of the C200 or maybe a more conservative color grade, you can head over to Scott's channel. Um, he made a video about this day as well, a little bit more behind the scenes. So I'll link that in the description below and I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, make sure to check out my Skillshare link, Scott's link, all the things. Let me know if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button down below for new videos every single week, please. I don't know why it took me like weeks to make this video, but I just had so much fun color grading this stuff. It was fun, but it took forever. Okay, okay, bye.